Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our interactive webinar, um, STEM Education. Uh, we're here talking to Robin Corbeil. I'm going to get started in about uh, one or two minutes or so. I want to let uh, kind of the uh, attendees filter in. Uh, we'll give them a couple more minutes, and then we'll actually get started um, with with our with our webinar here. So bear with us a couple minutes, and then we'll get started. Thanks. Okay, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for, for participating today. My name is Trevor Pope. I am the competition master for the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition and the customer success manager for our Coder Z programming software. I'm very happy to welcome you to this interactive session about STEM, robotics, and robotics competition, where we'll discuss together with you how robotics competitions like CRCC can help your students get even more engaged with STEM and STEAM education. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes, technicalities before we begin. Uh, I do want to make this an interactive webinar, and during the session, I'm going to have a few poll questions to ask you um, as we progress through these webinar. These poll questions will appear on your screen uh, in this GoToWebinar toolbar that's on the side of your screen. Uh, so please take a few minutes to answer those poll questions as they pop up. I'm going to start with the first one here to make sure it works properly, uh, which is the what is your role? So I've opened up that poll. Uh, so please take about 30 to 60 seconds or so to answer that poll question, and then we'll get back into our slides. We'll give this another 10 seconds or so. All right, excellent. Uh, again, we do want to make this interact, so we want you to interact with us during this session. Um, this is an Ask Us Anything session, so we do need your questions. To submit a question, simply type your question in that question box in that lower right-hand corner of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, we've received some questions in advance, so my guest Robin and I will make, your, make, we'll make sure that, that we answer most of those questions that might come up during this live interesting session. Uh, we will be recording this session. We will share it with everyone upon completion. So we'll send out an email to a link where you can actually download the session. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Coder Z or CRCC, that's going to be my next poll question here, is if you have seen it. Uh, so let me launch that. We'll ask this poll if you have seen or have been familiar with Coder Z, uh, our online programming environment. Again, we'll leave this open for about 30 seconds or so. All righty, thank you. Uh, so, I saw a lot of no responses there who have people who are not familiar with our Coder Z learning environment. So let me take a couple minutes or 
to tell you about it. Uh, Intellitech has been a pioneer of robotics and education but for over 30 years. Our cyber robotics platform, Coder Z, is an online learning environment that allows students worldwide to program 3D virtual robots, both in the classroom and in the CRCC, the Cyber Robotics Coding Competitions, organized by the Intellitech STEM and CTE Foundation and sponsored by Coder Z, Intellitech, Oracle Academy, and others. Uh, Coder Z makes learning STEM with robotics accessible, affordable, and enjoyable for all. You can learn more about Coder Z by visiting gocoderz.com or by following Coder Z on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we are more than happy to announce today that our speaker today is Miss Robin Corbeil. Hi, Robin. Thanks for being here. Hi, Trevor. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, Robin has taught in four different states. She's taught in Arizona, Rhode Island, Illinois, and currently is teaching in middle school here in Litchfield, New Hampshire for almost 20 years. Uh, she has presented at the Krista McAuliffe Technology Conference and worked with the State of New Hampshire Department of Education with her technology cohort. Last year, Robin had a very successful participation with her students in the CRCC. Litchfield Middle School had over 75% of their student population participate in the Cyber Robotics Coding Competition, and her team finished second here in the New Hampshire State Finals. During the fall of 2018, I had the opportunity to visit Robin's classroom and was thoroughly impressed with her curriculum, her extracurricular programs, and her passion to motivate students. She inspired each and every student and also recruited other teachers to participate and involve their administration. We're happy to have you as our main speaker today, Robin. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right, let's get this webinar started. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> the audience is yours. Can you start off by telling us, or I guess introducing yourself and tell us about your background and teaching career? So my name is Robin Corbeil. I teach at Litchfield Middle School. I've been here for about 15 years teaching as their computer instructor. Um, I started the program here doing it just part time and then the program grew as technology became more forefront in our classrooms. Uh, most of my career was spent teaching um, what you would consider digital, digital literacy classes, um, Office, Excel, Word, graphic design. A lot of it didn't center around pro, um, programming, computer science and robotics until about three years ago where I was lucky enough to get trained through Project Lead the Way and we started to introduce um, more block coding. We had done a little bit of code.org and some other online things as little pieces within our curriculum, but I would say three years ago our curriculum really changed and we really started to focus on um, coding and computer science. And it's funny when I talk about coding because it's really not about coding, it's about problem solving. And it's about what you do when you find yourself in a difficult situation and how you filter through the information that you already know to come up with a plan, execute that plan, and then accept failure when it doesn't quite work the way it's supposed to. So coding is a great life tool. I find for my kids, um, every student in Litchfield gets at least six months of computer science instruction in the middle school. Awesome. Most students get an entire year with me and that's strictly with the coding aspect of it. But we also have, I have a partner in crime who teaches um, design and modeling and robotics. Um, and that partner has changed a little bit over the last couple of years because it is hard to find a person who's really ready to embrace that and um, has that technical background. Um, but it's really kind of a neat um, direction that our district is going in and we're still fairly new at it. Like I said, um, I started this three years ago doing um, just a project lead the way mini lesson on how to build apps. And that's kind of where my interest in block code started. And then two years ago, I was approached to take over our Lego robotics team, which is a different type of block coding, but the same type of problem solving skills but it was more in this robotics area, um, which was not my comfort zone. It was not what I was trained in. I didn't take any classes on it, but I said, oh, okay, we'll try this. Um, and we've really been able to grow that program from probably just one team to two teams of five to seven kids to I think we have it at about 15% of our population participates in that program. So two years ago, I did not do the first Coder Z competition because I was getting settled kind of in the, the, that arena. 
So this year when it came up, I thought, all right, let's try it. We've kind of figured out at least how to start off in these other areas, the block coding and the robotics area for um, first Lego league. So I jumped into this completely blind, didn't know what I was getting myself into and kind of said, well, let's try it. Let's see what this is. Let me attend a webinar that talks a little bit about what this does. Um, what I really liked about this is that it was so painless for me as a teacher. We logged in, I gave the kids the links, they got to get logged in, and once they were in, they pretty much could work on their own. It wasn't something that I had to take them step by step through. It wasn't something that I had to teach them how to do. It was intuitive. The kids are used to this platform. I, I hate to say it, but I love to say it. It got them off of Fortnite for a couple days and got them engaged in something that was a little bit more um, academic and program solving, made them think in a different way. Um, so that was kind of how we started. We loved the leaderboard. We would keep it up um, on our screen to see kind of where we fell. Uh, we made it a goal. I teach, we're a school of about 400 students to 450 students. I teach 100 of them at any given time. So it was my goal to say, all right, let's, let me introduce these 100 students to this and really see how they're doing. And of course, in order to do that for myself, if you're unfamiliar with the Coder Z competition, the way it worked last year, the goal is really to get through the first 10 lessons. And they, again, are very inter intuitive. They're very interactive. Um, they are set at that level that everybody can succeed, but there is some challenge in there. So kids would get stuck at level seven or they'd figure out, oh, look, I can get around it this way. Um, and you started to see the conversation start to happen, which was kind of an, a, a side benefit, is that they weren't, even though this was an individual thing that they could do on their Chromebooks by themselves, we are a one-to-one -one initiative, by the way. Um, so all of our kids have Chromebooks, but you don't need them. We, we spent maybe 10 minutes in class for a couple of days and the kids would kind of get on. Um, but we started even from day one going, all right, everybody start with this, let, you know, mission one and then jump to mission three and mission seven is really hard. So don't worry about if you get stuck on that. Oh yeah, you can skip your list up. So you started to hear this conversation that happened in the classroom completely around the technology, even though it was an individual activity that kids were able to pace themselves at their own speed and kind of stop when they felt a little bit overwhelmed and become more of a observer than a participant for a little while and see how, what other people were doing and then kind of jump back in. Um, so I think I got a little off task, but anyway, so I've been teaching <laughs> here for 15 years, but really my coding experience and my computer science experience has really been the last three years. So I really went into Coder Z with only two years experience in computer science. So I wasn't an expert who'd been doing this for 10 years and jumped in thinking, oh, you know, this is, this is everything that I know how to do. I just need to apply it. It was really new to me. Um, and again, one of the things that was nice is that it was easy for me to manage. It didn't require a ton of my time um, to get it set up. And once it was set up, the kids kind of just initiated it themselves. They got involved. If there were kids that were hesitant, they might need a little nudge here and there. But most of the kids um, really took the responsibility of, of learning this type of coding onto their own shoulders. So that was nice. Excellent. It, it's great to hear that you have a computer science program directly in the classroom uh, and are teaching it as part of your school curriculum. We're seeing a lot more middle, middle schools, a lot more middle schools kind of have that requirement nowadays. So it's good to see you, uh, your school take that initiative. Um, what tools do you use in, in your classroom to teach coding and, ro and robotics? Well, I'm gonna answer two things, even though you didn't ask it. Um, one of the <laughs> things about the state, because again, we started three years ago, we started with um, the Coder Z this year, we you know kind of stepped it up each year, but our state has just mandated computer science K to 12. Um, in every school in New Hampshire, um, starting September 1st. So it is something that, you know, even though we feel a little bit like we're not ready to take this on, it's something that's coming. And again, what I've seen with the kids is that they really embrace it, um, especially the block code. The script code can be a little bit more difficult for kids and they really have to get comfortable with the block code before they can do the script. We have energy efficient lights, so you're gonna have to give me a minute to just signal mine to go back on, hold on. <laughs> So 
So of course, the timeline for my in-school computer science curriculum, we um, are a Project Lead the Way district. So we started off by um, taking on a couple of their modules. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them, we create apps. And the other, we do physical computing, where we program controllers to light up lights and move things. And we use servos and different things like that. Both are capable of using script, but are really designed to be used as block code. So it's slightly different block code, but again, I think the kids start to, it's not about learning a specific block code language, but it's about getting confidence in an area where they may not necessarily think this is something that they can do. Mm -hmm. And then they start to do it and they realize, oh, all right, well, maybe I can do that. And of course, where I see that the most is with my girls. Um, I start with sixth grade. That's their first class with me. And um, I think the girls come in a lot, like not really sure what this class is going to be, and they end up being some of my strongest students. And so by That's the time awesome. they leave, I think they feel really good about, hey, you know, I'm pretty good at this, and I I deserve to be here with everybody else, kind of going after some of these um, awards and careers and competitions. Um, so we didn't have a lot of trouble getting our girls to be involved once they had had my class. Um, we don't have anything at the fifth grade level, so getting those students engaged was a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I noticed, uh, you know, you mentioned you were, you were a Project Lead the Way school and used the Project Lead the Way curriculum. And when I went to visit you and talk to you, you said that took about 75% of your class time. And what you did or how you incorporated the CRCC was you used the first uh, 15 to 20 minutes of class, had the students load that up on their Chromebooks and worked on CRCC before you actually got started with the PLTW curriculum. I thought that was a great way to incorporate it and bring it into the classroom to motivate the kids to get them excited. Yeah, and it was a nice um, de-stressor for the kids because it wasn't assessment based. It yeah. was totally, and it wasn't something that they had to do with a partner. It was something that they could just do. And again, kids love gaming. They love to see themselves ranked. They love to compare what level they're on. Um, mm -hmm. Even though we try not to do that with the <laughs> school, but they, I think, miss that. And so, you know, this ability to be like, wow, he's on level 10. She got to level 20. Oh my God, did you hear one of the kids got through the entire 30 levels in the first day? And, you know, and they wanted to know who that kid was. Mm. And, um, and those are sometimes the kids that even as teachers, we don't see. We don't know that they have that strength kind of hidden underneath because they're the kid who maybe doesn't do their work or maybe it doesn't on, you know, on task as much because they're not engaged in school. They're, you know, mm -hmm. they'd rather go home and play on their video games. And so this was a way to kind of let us see who some of those kids were. Some of them we knew, but some of them we didn't know. And it was kind of a surprise that. No. Uh, that was great to see. That was another one of the reasons I wanted to come visit you because I did notice that from an administrative point while running CRCC is that after the first week or so, you had a few students that actually completed all of boot camp, which was about 45 missions or so, and they had gotten through all of those in the first week. So I was thoroughly impressed with those students that, you know, that kind of came out of the woodwork and showed themselves and, and kind of appeared and, and made themselves known. So that was that was great to see. Um, did you encounter any challenges in the classroom and, and while teaching coding or, or in robotics? I think that, you know, some of the biggest challenges are um, with anything, it's the trust relationship with you have with the kids that you're not going to give them something that they're going to fail at. And you're not going to set them up in a situation where you're not going to be able to support them or help them or work through something to a reasonable end. And it didn't mean that, because I'll tell you, I didn't get through all the boot camp. <laughs> so there were, there were levels I couldn't help them on. But we would, it was more the conversations that would happen. Um, some of the things that got us stuck is, obviously, I teach one grade level when the competition is going on. So I was just in seventh grade at the time, I think it was. Um, so I hadn't met my sixth graders yet. So I didn't know who was going to be interested in this, who wasn't going to be interested. Luckily, I have a good um, partner in crime who is doing the robotics end on his side. He was a brand new teacher. This was his first year. I think he'd been here two months. And I said, hey, can you do this? He's like, sure. Um, and so again, trusted me, took the risk, and the kids really enjoyed it. And so he, again, just, he didn't do it every day. He did it a couple days for, you know, 20 minutes and said, all right, let's see what you guys can do. 
Um, we did have some motivators. Our principal got involved. She's um, our principal and our vice principal. Our vice principal is a pretty good cook. So um, I'm not going to say I, I bribed them, but I did offer <laughs> a treat. Incentive. You, you incentivized them. All made by Mrs. Corbiel <laughs> to anybody who finished all of the camp. I said, if anybody can do this, this is what you'll get. And I said, and if I have to cook 100 of these treats, then I'll make them. <laughs> And she kind of got on board and she said, all right, if, if they finish, I will make them something. So <laughs> they were helping motivate um, at lunches. The principal would motivate the kids. We would go in and kind of, you know, acknowledge the kids who were in the leading in each grade level. Again, it was mm -hmm. hard to get grade involved because they don't really have a computer science program or any kind of robotics stuff. So um, we were relying on classroom teachers who were very busy trying to get their content done. Um, but they did expose, we were lucky enough that they did expose all of the kids to the platform and challenge them again to do those first 10 lessons, which I can't say enough about how important that is because it, it just gives them that opportunity to see, okay, now I know what computer science is, or now I have a taste of what this is. I kind of understand it. It isn't this kind of big, scary word that's only over here for the you know really smart kids or the kids who are really good in math, maybe this is something that I'd be interested in. And maybe this is something that I could do. And then of course our eighth graders, um, I no longer had as students, so we had to get them connected in. Um, and so they did also get logged in. And I think that most of them did that, um, the first 10 missions, and they would come find me because they would get a bracelet or a cupcake or something if they got it. Um, and so they would come looking for me and say, I, I finished, I finished my 10, 10 lessons. <laughs> ah, I'm, on board. Where, and, I'm done. Where's my prize? Yeah. So, um, and again, they were talking amongst themselves and that was the general population. That was, you know, kind of the one goal is to get everybody to, to try this. And then there were the kids that were filtering to the top who were getting to mission 30, mission, mission 35 and getting stuck somewhere. And they'd come in and say, I'm stuck on mission 47, you know, 35. How do I get past that? And I said, I don't know. I'd have to see it. Um, but so-and-so got to, to mission 48 and they would go seek out that person. And they would kind of have this conversation about, well, what do I need to do? And, and the tech, the vocabulary that was starting to come out just from them talking was, was again, really cool to listen to and kind of hear what they were saying. So that was kind of fun. That's awesome. Um, the, the collaboration and student involvement. Um, that brings me um, to my next question, which is also going to be our, our poll question is, is, you know, last year in 2018, you enrolled your school in the cyber robotics coding competition. How did you hear about it? And, and what made you jump in feet first? I mean, you, you really got your, your school involved and, and it wasn't just your classroom. It was the entire school. So what made you kind of pull the trigger and jump in, um, you know, dive in head first and, and say, yes, I want to do this. Well, I think I have to be completely honest that the first year that the competition came <laughs> out, I had probably four or five emails, one from a school board member saying, Hey, you should check this out. Hey, you should check this out. Um, one of the negatives, and we've talked about this, that in our district, um, our first Lego robotics competition happens almost at the same time that Coder Z starts. So I was up to my eyeballs in my first year, three teams of um, robotics, two of which made it to the state level. So they continued on into um, December, just trying to manage that part of it. So that first year when people kind of whispered about it, I said, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I can do one more thing. Um, and then the second year it was again, I, I think I had a couple parents who just knew that, you know, these are the kind of things that I find cool and interesting. I am a technology geek, um, that this might be a good fit for what I was doing and my classroom, something that I might look into. And again, I think I attended a webinar just like this, got some information on it and said, all right, what do I have to lose? Let's try this and see what happens. Um, and again, I think for me, the reason that I wanted to push it out to my at least seventh and eighth graders, I mean, my eighth graders is because I saw my seventh graders engage in this. I heard the conversations that were happening. Um, when I released it out, nobody was off task. So I didn't have to walk around the room and make sure people weren't on YouTube or something else or playing with an animation software. They were all doing what they were supposed to be doing, um, which at middle school in seventh grade 
is not always the easiest task to um, accomplish. Yeah. So them and then hearing them start to talk about the different levels and and sharing the information and I'd have it up on my screen and, and I would be trying to complete a level and failing and you know they <laughs> just laugh at me and or I'd find a way to like get half the points because I I couldn't get all of the commands to work the way that I wanted them to but I could get you know from point A to point B so I'd get half the score and just kind of that being transparent the kids really thrived in that environment and they were engaged and they were solving problems and the majority of them were not giving up when it got difficult they mm -hmm. were seeking out which was this other collaboration thing that happened they were seeking out others because they wanted to succeed at this and so they were looking for the tools to do that and i think as skills for students those are things that we want them to do whether yeah. it's in math social studies science when you hit something that you don't have the answer to we don't want them to give up. We want them to seek out other individuals who have the tools to help them get where they need to be, so that they yeah. can put them together. So yeah, it, it, you know exactly. That's uh, that's a great point to you know, to see the students collaborate back and forth. And when they get stuck, you know they throw their hands up and say, "Mrs. Corbeil, I'm stuck. How, you know, help me." You know, you, you offer your assistance and guidance and, and the tools that they need to push them over the hump without specifically giving them the answer. And we do talk a lot about well thought out questions. <laughs> they can keep raising your hand and say, I'm stuck. I'd have to say, well, what are you stuck on? The robot won't turn left. It keeps just spinning in a circle. What do you mean it keeps spinning in a circle? What block are you using? And so again, I wouldn't get out of my chair. I'm big with this with the kids. I won't get out of my chair unless they give me a question that I can answer, not a question that's so vague that they're looking for me to come solve it for them. And a lot mm -hmm. of times when I would get there, I'd say, I don't know, let's try this. Try putting changing this to 750 and the kid and we would try it and it wouldn't work or it would work a little bit. OK, and usually I could walk away before they had completely solved the, the issue because just getting that little bit of support was enough for them to take that risk and keep going. So that was, a, you know, a, a nice way. And other students did that, too, for one another. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, so Coder Z uses a, it's a Blockly based environment, very similar to Scratch. Um, did you find that the the competition helped those students or, or some of your students get more engaged in STEM and your computer science curriculum? I have to say I've used Scratch. We tried Scratch early on and the kids just didn't engage. They kind of did a little bit and they were like, ah, OK, like this is this is cool. With the competition, again, having the leaderboard up, they loved. Yeah. They were all about the leaderboard. They loved to see where our school was in comparison to other schools. And again, when you talk about not just putting the leaderboard up for the sake of putting the leaderboard up, but putting the leaderboard up and analyzing it. And Trevor will know because we, we actually found mistakes on it and corrected them. We we're like, this isn't <laughs> right. We looked it up online and that school district has more kids than that. How come their population isn't? And so mm -hmm. again, talk about a teachable moment we would look at the leaderboard and we would look at where we were and then we would say okay but where are the other schools that are about our size and so we would start to analyze the data mm -hmm. that was on the leaderboard and the kids had no idea that we were analyzing data they were just interested in where we thought we fell and how this worked um, right and the same thing for the individual leaderboards like they wanted to know who had finished the most lessons at missions and, and, you know, how quickly they had done it. And again, we had a story about a student who was facing some horrific challenges this year, who I think this was his saving grace in a lot of ways, because this was his thing. And he ended up um, being one of the students who finished first. Um, and we knew he had a talent for this, but this brought something to his life that was so full of joy at a time when it was so full of sadness. Mm -hmm. um, he became kind of this rock star for a short period of time. We had a pep rally. And again, our administration is really good about recognizing these different things. So all of the students who participated in all of our robotics competitions actually were acknowledged at this um, pep rally along with our sports teams. So they got to come up, they got their medals, they got little, you know, trinkets and bracelets and things that we had for each one of the students. Um, but this student got to get up in front of the other 400 and some odd students to a round of applause for, <laughs> um, for placing second. And, you know, for him, I think that's a moment that he will never forget. And I don't know that he would have ever gotten in the course uh -huh. of his in Litchfield. 
yeah, you know, that's great to hear those inspiring stories of the, you know, the introverted middle school student who, who doesn't have a lot of friends, who, who finds a way to become a superstar and excel for a few weeks. Uh, I can, I can imagine, you know, I, yeah, I remember him from the finals and I, I, you know, I can just imagine his, his excitement uh, to get that award. So congrats to you guys and, and your team. Uh, so you offer a lot of uh, after-school programs, FLL, VAX, you do Computer Club. Have you noticed any advantages CRCC has compared to those other programs? We actually don't do VAX after-school. The only after-school um, strict robotics, and again, a, a little bit of background. Uh, a few years ago, I was pulled in again when STEM became big. Okay, let's do something. How about you take on Math Club? So I took on Math Club, and we did some math counts, video competitions and different things, but it was really a struggle to get kids to want to be, not just spend the time there, but even be associated with it because it wasn't the coolest thing to do. Um, so we struggled with that. We even tried turning it into a STEM club, um, but we really couldn't build the numbers. And I think the thing about Coder Z is that one, it's a little bit under the radar. Everybody can join. And not everybody needs to know that everybody's joined, depending on what their name is on the leaderboard. But all of a sudden, they all want you to know, because as they start to climb the leaderboard, it becomes, oh, look, so-and-so's in you know, seventh place, and oh, look, I finished this. And, and um, I had one parent email me a little upset because the first couple days that we were doing Coder Z, her daughter, who had never had my class, would bring her Chromebook everywhere so that she could finish the missions because she just had decided that this was her thing. Um, like to the dentist office, she's sitting there and she's like, oh, the mother was just like, I couldn't wait for her to be done because she was just like, this is cool. Um, and again, she wasn't your stereotypical kid that you would see who would have come out for one of my clubs or you know joined in that way. But because this was kind of given to everybody and the encouragement wasn't, we expect you all to get to level 40. It was just everybody try it. Let's see if everybody can get to level 10. And, and that was our goal, was to get to level 10. And then we would go from there and decide what we wanted to do, so. Yeah, and it's it's a great that you're that one-to-one -one school where the students have their Chromebook and they can bring those to the library or the dentist's office or wherever there's that internet connection and they can complete their levels at home or, or kind of wherever. So a uh, couple of, I guess, housekeeping items, guys. Uh, for those of you who are participating, we do have this questions pane. So if you guys do have questions for myself or Robin, feel free to ask those in the questions pane. Uh, we did get a question from Stephanie about the Coder Z contest, isn't it? Is it for all grade levels? Um, we do open the competition to all grade levels, but typically we reserve spots in the finals for just middle school, anywhere from grades five to eight um, for that middle schools to participate in the finals. But again, all schools are allowed to kind of participate and compete in the program. Uh, there was another question that had, I guess, uh, you yeah, know, is a Coder Z contest all grade levels? Okay. Um, and again, guys, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to ask them in this questions pane down here at the bottom. Um, so I noticed when I visited your classroom, you had a group, you, there was a group of girls that seemed to be kind of in a clique, a, a clique of girls that, that all really, there were, there were a few that really excelled in Coder Z and they would help the other girls to kind of get over that hump. And it, it seemed to be a, a clique of girls, which was really good to see kind of them collaborating, them working together. Um, did you find that, that the girls enjoyed the program? Um, I think they did. Like I said, I think that, you know, part of the key to getting girls engaged in programming is kind of the same thing that it takes to get teachers involved in programming. You know, at first they think, oh, I don't know if I can do this. This is kind of hard. It's just getting them to take that first step. So again, we're lucky because we have the kids in my class who code. Um, so they're kind of familiar with the block code. So for them, this becomes something that's comfortable. Um, and once they started doing it, they excel at it and they're good at it. And sometimes they are far better with their communication skills than the boys. Um, they, they know how to support and help one another and reach out for that help. They're a little bit more um, willing to admit that, I think, sometimes than some of the boys who will struggle with it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, trying to accomplish it. But yeah, so the girls did a great job. Um, I. Yeah, I, I, especially the ones who, who had been introduced to it, I think is, um, 
it's really important that you introduce everybody to it in a kind of fun, friendly setting. Um, we even talked about having, um, if you don't have a one-to-one -one initiative, but you have a computer lab, offering an after-school session for everyone to come and kind of make it like a coding party. You know what I mean? Everybody comes and kind of plays and, you know, maybe you serve some brownies. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. that, it, it takes the stress and the pressure off of it and makes it fun. And if they don't have the resources at home, this is an opportunity then for them to be in the same room. And what we found is that when they were in the same room, they started talking about things. They started talking about how to solve problems. So I'm going to kind of ask you the next question in parallel with my poll question that I pop up, which is, did the, did the, the CRCC, your coding robots, does that align with the computer science standards that you need to teach? As well as our poll question is how much could cyber robotics and the cyber robotics coding competition engage your students in STEM? Oh, that's a big question. Um, the standards, like yeah, I said, did, did did CRCC or did you find that that the 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 CRCC aligned with the computer science standards that you need to, that you need to teach in your curriculum? I mean, I I think that they do really well. It's one of those things, though, that if you teach technology, you realize that as soon as you think you fully understand the standards and what they're asking you to do. Um, they change on you because the technology has changed. Mm -hmm. But there are some underlying threads that I think are really important, and that's the problem solving, um, the networking that goes on, the understanding logically about how things work, um, certainly working incrementally so that you know they don't try to program the entire obstacle. They start to see, can I just get the robot to move in the right direction? Um, and so they take that, and those are really the cores of computer science is, you know, kind of approaching things in little pieces mm -hmm. and breaking them down, solving those individual problems, and then taking all those little pieces and putting it back together so that you can solve the bigger problem. I pulled out our standards, so I was just kind of looking at them. Um, and I think that before I get to, I mean, certainly algorithms and programming, absolutely. Before I get too stuck on whether it meets my standards, it's always for me whether the students are engaged in learning. Because I can always shift the learning gently to the standard, but if I don't have the kids engaged in the learning, the standard gets lost, no matter what I'm trying to teach. So Coder C definitely engaged them. Um, in learning, and I think that that's probably the biggest thing. And again, they found, again, they were so funny. I think they found one typo, which they put on a note <laughs> and we let Trevor know about when he got there, that something yep. was wrong. And they knew exactly what mission it was spelled wrong on, or if something didn't work right. If they mm -hmm. were like, okay, I'm programming it the right way, and they would talk as a group, like they all agreed that it worked in this other one and it wasn't working here. And, and so they were, again, debugging, which, we had never taught them. It, it wasn't a part of their vocabulary. They didn't know the word for what they were doing, but that's exactly what they were doing. So, um, because they were engaged, they valued it. They were, you know, they were they were engaged in their own learning, which was cool. Awesome. So you mentioned you got another a, a new teacher involved, as well as some of your administration. What did you do to get those other teachers involved? And, you know, I'm sure they saw your excitement and your motivation. And and is there a way that you got them involved, or something that you did to trigger them to 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 be part of the competition? And and how? What else did you do to promote this within the school? Again, one of the ways that we made it easy for the other teachers is, of course, I did it in my class. I did it at home first. Okay, can I do the first? <laughs> yep, all right, tested it. It's good. If I can do the first 10, most of them should be able to. Um, and then we did it with my classes. And then I said to my classes, hey, do you guys want to go down? And so what they did was they went down to the sixth grade classes and they actually stood behind the sixth graders and helped them get set up and logged in and kind of complete that first mission kind of sharing that information. And then once the kids had finished a mission or two, we were able to come back and we just did that for one day. So it was probably 10 or 15 minutes out of our class time during one day. And again, I think that that's important if you're if you're gonna be the lead and you are gonna host it and you kind of are like, all right, this is great. Depends on what your goal is. 
if you want to get your whole school involved, you kind of have to be willing to be that support system. But once you get them started, your coworkers are like, oh, okay, this is this is great. And I'm going to say this off key. It's a great sub plan. If I have to be out for the day, yep. you can do Coder Z. And I know they're still learning. I know they're thinking. I know there's going to be no behavior problems because they're engaged. Um, yeah. So it becomes a tool, and you can kind of sell it as that tool for them um, to use in their classrooms. And then yep. my fifth grade involved, my librarian teaches a computer literacy class, so it isn't coding. And she only had half the students. So she you know, worked with those students and got them on. And then we had to kind of sneak the other ones into the library to get them on. And so that was a little bit trickier, um, but we were successful at getting all the students in and on. So mm -hmm. there uh, as part of the competition, there are about 100 missions or so that the students need to get through. And we release those in multiple phases. We start with a getting started or a practice session and then we get into into a boot camp uh, where we do guided walkthroughs and tutorials to teach the students how to do more intermediate level programming uh, and then go into a qualifiers for the, you know, where we take away those walkthroughs, take away those tutorials and students have to figure out the code on their own basically. Um, you, I guess, is there a specific aspect of the competition that your students liked most? Uh, was it was it the coding? Was it the interaction with other students? Was it the collaboration? Was it the finals? I think um, obviously they love the finals. Um, I think that the the different levels speak to the different levels that you're going to find in your school. I don't think that you're going to be able to run this and have every single kid finish all 40 missions and have this be you know the it all for every kid in your school. That's not kind of how it's set up, or at least not for us. It was it was more about the introduction met the needs of all of the students. It was set up in a way that there were the tutorials, there were the helps. It was fun, it was engaging, it was interesting for them to navigate through. But in that general population, it helped to identify that 20% that really show um, a high level of ability and interest in this. And again, some of them, there, those were outliers that we didn't expect it from. Kids who normally didn't perform well in the academic setting, all of a sudden we're like, wow, he's pretty smart. And they're like, well, he doesn't do any homework and he's not doing great. I'm like, he's doing great on this. So it gave us an opportunity to kind of pull a kid in and be like, wow, this is really impressive. And so the second phase of it, those qualifiers, I think really spoke to that 20% ish maybe of your population. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but mm -hmm. those who are like, not only did I enjoy doing the first 10, but I like this. This is something yeah. that interests me. This is something that I potentially could choose as a career. And then when you went into the, the finals where it was the competition and, and they get to be in an arena with a whole bunch of other kids who are interested in the same thing. Um, I just think in middle school, kids struggle so much with their identity and who they are and finding their place and finding confidence in who they are that any opportunity that we can give kids to be okay with being smart. We give them lots of opportunities to be okay with being strong athletes and being artists and being creative in drama and different things like that. But we don't always give them an opportunity to be in this arena with all these other people who are really smart and have the same kind of brain that works logically like that until they're in probably their junior or senior year in high school is when you start to see those classes come together for them. So right. the top levels, those finals, and again, nobody was disappointed. Well, maybe a little disappointed, but because we could, this was, here's another negative. You don't get to take a lot to the finals. So we had a big school, we had 400 kids that mm -hmm. did some portion of this. And then we had a, a good number of kids um, who, who finished all the, the qualifiers or came pretty close and we didn't get to take them all so we were like oh you know they they wanted to go they they wanted to keep this going is and so it kind of filters those kids up um and they enjoyed being a part of that process so that the negative was that we didn't get to take more kids i didn't get to take more you know more girls more boys who had that opportunity we were limited to four students um, and i think that was even more than other schools were able to take um, but again, those four students felt pretty good about the fact that they were going to represent our school um, in that competition. I believe all four of them had finished all the qualifiers. 
Yeah, so in uh, in the fall 2018 event, I think there were about, uh, we had 60 schools in New Hampshire participate, and there were a little over 4,000 students. I think the number was 4,200. And of those, I think we had only about 60, 60 total out of that, that 4,200 that completed all uh, 100 missions that were available to them. And, and your school had quite a few of that, you know, it being at being about one percent, one and a half percent, your school had quite an impressive number uh, over that over that uh, average. So it was good to see those uh, those students excel and, and doing well. And it's unfortunate we didn't have enough room at the finals to invite everybody. Um, feedback: Did you get feedback from your administration or superintendent or parents um, about the competition or about uh, what you what you were teaching? I did. Like I said, I had the one parent who was like, oh, my God, I can't believe she can't put the computer down because she has to finish this competition, which. <laughs> um, no, lots of support from um, not only the you know parents, teachers, the parents who went to the competition, um, other parents who just, you know, I see here and there who were involved were like, yeah, that was really cool. Um, like I said, the one downfall is that it runs time wise for us the same time as first Lego. So, you know, 40 of our kids are, or 35 of our kids are involved in that. And it's hard for them to split their attention between the two. Um, so unfortunately that was feedback we got too, that, you know, they were like, oh, would have liked to do that, but we're busy doing this, which again, great problem to have. We have two opportunities for kids to um, kind of excel in this area in our state. So that's kind of cool. Um, we also had, I was at a school board meeting last night and we were just talking about robotics in our district and STEM in our district. And again, our, our um, chairman of the board said, I think it's phenomenal what we've done with our transition in three years from, you know, not really doing a lot at the middle school or nothing at the middle school in true computer science to <laughs> where we are now, which is, you know, we've got, you know, two years of good computer science. And then we have all of these other programs that kind of help prepare kids for when they're going to hit me and the different things that they can do. And Coterzy is one of those because, again, it like whets the appetite for those fifth graders so that they, when they walk through the door and those sixth graders when they walk through the door into my classroom, they've already seen some part of it. They've been exposed to what block code is and they're like, oh, OK, it's different. But they have that success rate that is there. So yeah, we did get lots of feedback. Administration were great with it. Um, they, like I said, they held a pep rally. They included us in the pep rally. They showed up at lunches. They made announcements. Um, I think my principal kept the leaderboard going in his computer too, you know, kind of seeing where we were each day because I think we were surprised um, yep. at how well we were doing. And again, he was analyzing it along with uh, the students and I going, okay, well, how are we comparing to the other school districts that are like us? It wasn't about, you know, beating everybody. It was okay, you know, are we doing okay in comparison to the other schools around us? Sure. That was cool. Yeah, all positive. Uh, yeah. So are you gonna so should there be a competition in two thousand nineteen this fall? Are you, are you gonna participate again? You're gonna join up and, and any words of wisdom for those those people that are on the fence and saying, Hey, I'm considering it, you know, any any wisdom for them who are considering signing up? Um, I think the biggest thing that, you know, I would like to say to people is that it's not difficult. Again, I do first Lego, that is hugely time consuming. Um, it takes a lot of time, effort, energy, knowledge, um, direction for these kids to end up in a similar place, if not close. So the, the Coder Z required so much less of me other than what kind of could happen naturally. Um, it wasn't the kids could could do a lot more independently and had options on how to solve problems for themselves and they didn't they truly didn't rely on me for the answers um, or the direction or to get them started or to motivate them they did it on their own um, it is still aspects of it are still hard so again this is why i say i don't know that 100 percent of your kids will get through all of those qualifiers but i don't know that 100 percent of your kids should you know what i mean i think yep. that have thing and we need to have things to work for you know what i mean so i did a, i did the first 10 this year maybe i'll go a little further next year after i've had a class or i've done something or i've gone to a summer camp or something 
but it's a nice introduction and it leaves the door open for places for them to go. Yep. So, yeah. uh one of the audience questions that popped up is, uh, is the CRCC for, for, I guess, is there a different CRCC for multiple grade levels, if, if that kind of makes sense? Um, right now, it's just, it's meant for middle schools for kind of sixth through eighth grade. Um, it's all one competition. We are looking to develop multiple phases of the competition. We know students participated, you know, maybe sixth graders this year and are going to participate again at seventh graders next year. So we will be changing the competition, um, making more complicated missions where we transition them from uh, just a Blockly into kind of a, a hybrid Blockly Java based environment. And then again, we'd love to have a specific, just a, a eighth grade competition based on Java. So we are looking at doing individual CRCCs for those middle school grades, just a sixth grade competition, a seventh grade competition, and an eighth grade competition. Uh, right now it's not there yet. We're just at a one competition, but we are looking to to do that. Uh, so I hope that answers uh, the audience question. The other one was, is there a fee for Coder Z or to participate in, in CRCC. Um, there will be a fee for the 2019 event. You can register as an individual. An individual student can participate. There will be a, a classroom participation level as well as a school participation level and, and those will be outlined on our website with, with pricing as well as uh, the number of students in each uh, kind of demographic area for that. Um, Kind of brings me to our next question. Our next poll question is, uh, do you guys want to learn more about CRCC? Uh, do you guys want more information on that? So let me ask that poll question uh, about Coder Z and or CRCC. And let me make sure you guys can see that. There you go. Uh, so I am pleased to announce that we will be having a fall 2019 CRCC event. Um, we are on, on our crcc.io webpage. Uh, there is more information on that as well as a, uh, if you want to stay in the loop and would like more info, you can join our, our, our uh, register for updates and uh, we'll email you uh, information on kind of registration, how that works, as well as um, kind of keep you in the loop with updates. Uh, as well as on that CRCCIO webpage, if you uh, if you want to bring the CRCC experience to your state or district or school, uh, there's a contact us link at the top right side of that screen or the webpage. Uh, you can you can contact us with your request to bring it to your school. Uh, we'll try to work with your district or a Department of Education to to host that and and make that a full statewide competition. I will say too, when I was um, first involved with the Coders the first few days. Um, IntelliTech and Trevor especially were really easy to work with. There was a phone number. I called, a live person picked up, usually Trevor, and would answer a question. And if he didn't have the exact answer, he would work it, you know, say we're working on that, we're looking at this. Um, so that was definitely, and you know, when there was something that I, we, you know, we uh, didn't, our girls didn't necessarily qualify in the first round for the, the finals. And I said, we had two girls who completed all of them. We just reached out to in, to Trevor and he was like, no problem. And they, you know, allowed our girls to be a part of that competition. So, um, cause we didn't want to have to pick between a girls and a boys team. And so working with Trevor was very easy. Um, and I think they made thoughtful changes when we brought concerns to, to, to them. So I think that that's another thing to know that sometimes you get involved with things and it's such a big organization that they've got kind of a system that's already in place where because this is new and just starting, I think that they are continuing to evolve and they're listening to the people who are participating and constantly trying to make it better, better experience for kids. At least that's the feeling I got. Okay, so before, thank you for that. You're making me blush here with all the compliments. I appreciate that. A couple of audience questions here that I'm trying to manage uh, talking to you and, and, and make sure my time's good and make sure all my polls pop up correctly. So I'm trying to get to answer all these audience questions at the same time. Uh, CRCC was just mission-based, where students would just go through mission A, they'd complete it, go through mission C. As part of our Coder Z classroom software, we do offer curriculum that goes along with that. So we do teach students the um, kind of the 
curriculum, the STEM, the engineering behind it, the theory of what they're learning in the missions um, before they actually go through the mission. So uh, it kind of is beneficial if you do or if you, if you are a school uh, that has Coder Z. Um, you know, it's certainly helpful to have that curriculum so you can understand uh, the, the missions and how to go through that. Uh, as well as a question from a fifth grade teacher um, recommending if they start out with code.org to prepare your students for other for other grades or other competitions. Um, I don't I'm not the probably the best person to answer that so I'm going to deflect that over to you Robin and ask you do you do you recommend that students start with a code.org or a scratch or something before they get into Coder Z or CRCC? Uh, my kids tried code.org and scratch um, and it Code.org is, is changing all the time, so I can't, you know, speak to what they are exactly today. But when I was first using them, I would use them for a day, maybe two days in my classroom, and then the kids would lose interest in what they were teaching. It didn't adapt quickly enough for the middle schoolers that I had sitting in my room. Um, so I, where I feel like the Coder Z competition did a better job at that. The Coder Z, the, the, again, the kids were engaged when we were doing it and it seemed to be um, paced a little bit better. Um, and again, it, it feels a little bit like a video game, um, which I think the kids really related to. Um, so I found the engagement with, it wasn't that I, I didn't like code.org. Again, that was something I had used for sub plans and, and done with kids at different times. But it wasn't something that that caught their interest the way that this did. And again, Scratch, same thing when I did it. I know some people love it, but the kids were, yeah, it was okay, but it didn't it didn't hold their engagement and their interest. It didn't have the conversations happening the way that this did. Yeah, and with the CRCC, that's, uh, we run it for about six weeks. It's six weeks, it starts in October, ends uh, mid-November or so. Um, but at the same time, it's not a full, you know, you're not taking a full, you know, six weeks worth of curriculum time. You can, you, you, we anticipate anywhere from, from 10 to 15 hours of student engagement to finish all of the boot camp missions. Um, and and it obviously it depends on the student, but we don't anticipate them to be fully, fully engaged or, or using Coder Z this entire time frame. So uh, we open it up for six weeks and then give them that that window uh, to kind of fit it into their schedules. And um, we, we are going to change that a little bit for the 2019 event. And instead of doing boot camp as a full set of, um, I think it was 80 missions, uh, we're, we're gonna kind of release this in phases. And, and it's part of the six weeks, we'll do, we'll do a two week phase um, of about 30 missions. We'll let students go through those. And then, you know, that'll still be considered boot camp. And then we'll release kind of a pre-qualifiers um, where, where it's a little bit more challenging and the students will go through those 30 missions or so in the next two weeks. And then we'll have a school finals or a school qualifiers uh, where there's another 20 or 30 missions. And then you can, you know, that'll figure out who's the best uh, students in your particular school who, who may or may not get an invitation to the final. So we're hoping to kind of structure it a little bit differently to keep that engagement and keep the students uh, energized and excited throughout the six weeks. And again, for those, those first 10 missions, if you're just looking to, you know, we need to introduce computer science in our district in some ways, you can get through those first 10 missions probably in three half an hour to 20 minute sessions. So it's not like you have to be doing it for six weeks with 100% of your kids. And the kids who want to do it and continue it, it becomes a great thing for kids. If you have an enrichment block or a study block, um, those kids who don't need to go get extra help somewhere or take a test or do, you know, their actual homework in that block can do this instead. They can come to a computer lab and they can be working on this. And again, it just keeps them in the academic instead of having them drift off into some other area where it's not as academic. Um, but it doesn't take as much time out of your curriculum as you think to get through those first 10 and introduce it. And then you'll immediately see the kids that will filter and want to. And those kids, you don't have to necessarily take class time to work with because they're engaged and motivated and they're doing it after school. They're doing it at home. They're doing it when they finish their homework. Um, but if you want to point out certain aspects of things, you can bring it back in. So for five minutes, you can be like, everybody jump onto level seven see where they're doing this that's how, logically that's how that works that's how you start to read because it is like learning a foreign language when you learn how to read code it's like they have to see it enough times to do that 
Um, and so it, it's not going to, you know, fill your curriculum for six weeks unless you want it to fill your curriculum for six weeks. Robin, thank you so much. Um, it, it's been an inspiring conversation from my side, and, and thank you to the audience for attending as well. Uh, I want to invite all of you to join our online community of STEM professionals on our Facebook channel. It's called Robotics and STEM for All, as well as stay in touch with us. Um, in the upcoming weeks, we're going to share details about another great STEM webinar. Uh, so stay, stay tuned to your email and social networks because we'll be delighted to share that uh, information with you as that uh, comes up. Um, if you want to experience CoderZ, we are offering a 14, it's a, it's a full featured 14 day free trial. So you get access to all of the missions for 14 days. You can, you can go to our gocoderz.com uh, website, uh, which is up on your screen here. Uh, and you take a look at that, that gives you access to everything. You can, you can take a look at that free trial, uh, see how, uh, see in person everything that Robin mentioned is part of her experience. Uh, again, we will be recording this and sharing that recording of this uh, interactive active session with Robin, and we'll share that with you in a couple of days or so once we get it downloaded and, uh, and cleaned up a bit. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, by searching for GoCoderZ uh, on any one of those uh, social media outlets. Uh, a million thanks, Robin. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time Bye -bye. today. Uh, and thank you all for being here. May the code be with you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.